So with your pendulum in your hand, let's begin by learning the three basic uh, responses a pendulum can give. Uh, there is no correct actions for these pendulums for yes, no, and the search position, or the three positions we're going to work with. But I'll show you the ones that I use, and most dowsers do use these. Uh, the search position just means it's where every dowsing operation begins. It's how the pendulum is when you begin your dowsing process. For me, it's back and forth. And that just means I'm up and running and I'm ready to get a response. So this is the search position and I'm holding it between my knees. Each of our uh, joints, in addition to the seven chakras we have going up and down our, our spine, we have chakras in our elbows and hands and in our knees and other places. And the right knee is usually positively yang charged, whereas the left knee is usually negative or yin charged. So we'll use those to help enhance what's going on here. Uh, for me, the yes response is a clockwise response. For me, no is an anti-clockwise or counterclockwise response. So here we are in the search position, which I actually make it go with my hand. You'll see my hand moving. And I'm in the search position, and I'm holding it with my hand pointing downwards. As you can see, I, I have it here, my thumb and first uh, finger pointing downwards. And whichever hand you're holding it in right now is the correct hand for you to be using. And you hold it over your right knee, and you notice how it goes into the clockwise direction. This is yes, this is plus, this is active, this is yang, this is yes. I go back in between, and notice how my hand pushed it back into the search position. And now we go over the left knee. And it goes from the search position to no. This is yin. This is no. This is receptive. This is lunar rather than solar. This is no. And then back into the, yin pos into the search position. Now, you want to be doing this exercise a number of times, going from search position to yes, plus, active, yang, search position, no, yin, receptive, no. Now, if it hasn't worked for you, it's time to what I call cheat. And basically, you're training this dog on a leash how you want it to respond. And so if you're in the search position and you go over here and it just sits there like that, make it go clockwise. Show it how you want it to be. This is yes, this is plus, search position. This is no, notice my hand, making it do it. And you do that for a couple of times and then try it again the next time without making your hand move, show me yes, show me plus. And the idea is to have it feel like it's working without any uh, part on, on your part making it move consciously. That's the trick. This is yes, no, and the search position. Once you have these three, you can play 20 questions. Remember, maybe when you were a kid, is it bigger than a bread box or is it in the living room? And you can then ask yes and no questions to find the answers to whatever it is that you're looking for. Perhaps the thing that uh, differentiates a uh, practice dowser from a beginner is the ability for a good dowser to tune in on the exact thing that they're focusing on, to narrow the bandwidth. Um, and to do this, I use a series of questions when I douse. Uh, the more important the issue is, the more probably I am going to be using these questions. And uh, let me just share them with you. We'll go through them uh, probably one or two times. Uh, the first thing is, I'm up and running, okay? And up and running is you sort of state the general area uh, that you wish to be questioning about. And I'm going to be asking about whether it's going to rain today, okay? This is the question that you can be using yourself later on for a practice session. And so you're in the search position and you say, okay, I want to ask about whether it's going to rain today. And you notice how it went into a yes? That just means I understand it isn't going to rain. It's not saying it's going to rain. It's just saying, yes, I understand the question and I'm ready to proceed. Okay. The next one is, can I? This is what I want to do. Is it going to rain? Can I? Which means, do I have the skills as a dowser to douse whether it's going to rain today? Can I? 
The next one, and you notice how it went into a yes, the next one is may I. May I doubt whether it's going to rain today. Well now, this may not make any difference about the rain, but there are some times when permission is very important. And permission is a very ethically important thing for a dowser to get involved with. You don't go dowsing other people without their permission. It's a psychic invasion. It's like psychic rape, actually. So, may I means, do I have permission to do this? Now, wherever the answer comes from are, uh, well, some people call them the chaps upstairs. Uh, will give you also watch out for your well-being and if you're going to get into something that might get you into trouble, for example, some dowsers work with uh, what are called sick houses and these have sometimes ghosties and ghoulies and things that go bump in the night and if you're going to get involved with those and you don't know how to handle them, when you ask may I, you'll get a no. But in any event, so this is what I want to do, see whether it's going to rain today. Uh, can I? Yes. May I? Yes. And then, am I ready? Am I ready means, is it time for me to know this answer? For example, if you ask, is my mother going to, who's on her deathbed, is she going to die today? Maybe you're not ready to know that answer. It also means maybe I don't have the question phrased properly. But in this case, I do have my question, and my question, so I'm going to say, am I ready? And I get yes. And then you ask the question. And the question is, am I going to feel rain on my face sometime during daylight hours of today? Okay? And I'm going to douse for that right now. Am I going to feel rain on my face uh, right today? And the problem comes, oh, it, it's, it's not a cloud in the sky. There's not going to be any rain on me today. Aha! That's your left brain, analytical mind, getting in the way. And you mustn't allow that to impede the answer. And so after you've asked the question, am I going to feel uh, rain on my face today, during the daylight hours of today, you need to be like a child sitting in front of the Christmas tree looking at those five different Christmas presents, uh, picking them up uh, with his name on them and picking them up and saying, oh, I wonder what's going to be in here. Oh, this is a big one. I wonder what's going to be in here. And so if you can say, is, am I going to feel rain on my face sometimes during the daylight hours of today? I wonder what the answer is going to be. I wonder what the answer is going to be. I wonder what the answer is going to be. Well, as long as you're asking, you see I got a yes there. As long as you're asking, I wonder what the answer is going to be, you can't be saying, oh, there isn't a cloud in the sky. It can't possibly rain today. So you can't allow, you don't allow your, your, your left brain to get in the way of getting the proper answer. But is it the proper answer? Uh, well, the last question is, is this the truth? You genuinely want to know that. Now, first of all, I want to say you don't always get the correct answer in dowsing. Anyone who says they're 100% accurate with their dowsing is either uh, perfection incarnate, in which case you could fall on your knees before them and worship them, or they're damn liars, one or the other. Uh, so it isn't always correct, but the idea is to increase the possibility of getting the correct answer. And so by finally asking, is this the truth, you just double check it. So to run through again, this is what I want to do. Can I? May I? Am I ready? You ask the question. I wonder what the answer is going to be. I wonder what the answer is going to be. Is this the truth? So you go up through this chain of questions, and when you get to is this the truth, if it is, if it gets a yes, and you want to ask more questions, you go back to asking the next question. You don't have to start with the first four again. And so the loop looks like this. You go up and ask the questions, and then ask the question again, ask the question again. And this is the way, the process that I use uh, to enhance the possibility of getting the correct answer. Thank you.